On this planet, there's a place where there are no houses, no big buildings, no police, no wages or salaries. The residents do not curse the authorities or give hell to new Russian oligarchs. In fact, they do not curse anybody. The place I'm talking about is located right in the middle of our country on the Yenisei River in Siberia. People here rely only on themselves and expect performance only from themselves. commercial ship comes to Bakhta at the end of summer. It's called the Floating Store. After navigation ends, the only link between the village and the mainland is by air. There are few jobs in Bakhta. People live off their garden plots and hardly ever spend any money on food. Only professional hunters buy significant amounts of foodstuffs. The government, which earlier supplied the hunters with all they needed, has now dropped out of business of producing and selling furs. Hunters now have to pay for foodstuffs, fuel and transportation, and assume all the risks. It is impossible to predict how the business will go during the season. Вот придешь, вроде все есть, и ягоды, и орех, и соболь с осени есть. А начнется сезон, он куда-нибудь уйдет. Так что предсказать, думаю, навряд ли что будет. In a couple of weeks, the hunters will leave for the taiga to trap sables. They'll stay away for three months. Hunting for fur animals is the only indigenous industry that can provide a decent livelihood in the northern reaches of the Yenisei. The northerner cut off from the rest of the world and used to shifting for himself has created a world of simple, essential and therefore valuable things around him. Objects that help him to live, hunt and survive. The northerner always has the results of his own work before his eyes. It gives him strength, stamina and assurance. Life in the Yenisei Taiga Forest teaches people to watch nature closely, to follow its ways and obey its schedule. There is a time for every business. Timber life is focused on the river. By evening, they all come out to catch the white fish. By day, the fish shoals heading for spawning grounds keep to deep places, but by night, they move closer to the bank. In September, the nights are already long and increasingly cold, but as winter draws closer, preparing for winter becomes a more pressing task. While fish is passing, it has to be caught. The hunters have about a week and a half before they go to the taiga. They have to catch enough fish to leave for the family. Because white fish resembles Siberian herring, the locals call it 
herring. It's one of the main fishes stored up for the winter. Catching herring is so important for the local people that the early Russian settlers on the Yenisei have been called herring catchers. This unimpressive little fish has ensured the survival of generations of people on the Yenisei. Every fish has its own place on the Bakta people's calendar. As water grows cold, the burbot comes to life. It's the only freshwater cod that has remained in the rivers after the glacier receded. Some people on the USA call it a sutler. The real burbot harvesting begins after the river is covered in ice when the hunters are already in the taiga. So they have to hurry and catch enough burbot while the water is still free of ice and they beat the burbot with poles. Firewood burns in a pan inside a boat. The firewood has to be dry because raw wood doesn't burn as bright and then it crackles and scares away the fish. It calls for agility and calculation. Moving the pole slowly towards the fish, you have to choose the right moment to make a quick thrust. It's about a week to go before the hunters head for the taiga. The time is approximate. Nothing can be planned on the NSA exactly. This huge corridor is swept by different winds, each bringing a change of weather. The northern wind, referred to simply as north, is powerful and relentless. Lasts a whole day and a whole night and it brings cold weather. The northern wind is no joking matter if you're on the river. Fishing is out of the question. You're lucky if you make it closer to the bank where the wind is not so strong. The southern wind drives low clouds and usually brings precipitation, snow or rain. Rain is what the hunters wait for. After the rain, the water level in Yenisei and its tributaries rises and they can make their way to the taiga. Before they leave, the hunters throw a farewell party. Commercial trappers, although there are all sorts of people among them, are a community. They think alike and they're applying the same trade. Gennady Solovyov has lived in the taiga since he was 14. He used every chance to hunt and eventually settled down in Bakta, where there was good hunting area and a school for his three sons. Anatoly Blume came to the Yenisei in the early 1980s from the Tver region. He worked as a diesel engine mechanic at a biological station in a neighboring village. There he made friends with biologist Mikhail Tarkovsky, a Moscovite from the famous Tarkovsky family of writers and filmmakers. The friends did not stay long at the biological station, both dreamt of the taiga and a real man's job. A couple of years later, they moved to Bakta. Preparing and leaving for the taiga involves a lot of chores. Hunters prepare for that day in advance, make up the list of things to take along with them. In addition to equipment and fuel, these include a lot of objects that are indispensable for those staying in the taiga for a long time. Forgetting pliers or a piece of wire may turn out to be a tragedy. So much is needed that they even had to buy a used car to be able to load everything on it and bring it to the bank. The wooden boats made by the old believers from cedar trees are intended for carrying heavy loads and going up small rivers. The average boat is 10 to 11 meters long and has a shallow draft even when fully laden. The boat is just wide enough for a 200 liter drum of gasoline to be put in it crosswise.
A boat can carry between 500 and 1500 kilograms. Some are even larger. Hunters have a lot of luggage. The most important things go in last. They order bread from the bakery in advance. A hunter carries 45 loaves that will last him for 90 days. Half a loaf a day. The relatives feel a mixture of sadness and excitement. The hunters are due back by the new year. But in the taiga, nobody can tell. Bringing supplies is a serious and dangerous job. It calls for patience, confidence and skill. You have to watch for underwater obstacles. Passing the difficult stretches of water is a real art. In some places, in order to go up a rapid, you have to get up speed. In another place, you have to slow down abruptly. But the main rule that applies everywhere is to keep the bow strictly against the current. Failing that, it will be turned by the stream in no time, hurled against the rock and capsize. If you have to take a breather and figure out what tributary to enter, the best bet is to drift back a bit and stand still. Even standing in the stream, regulating the gas is much safer than allowing the current to turn your boat. This rapid has a big gradient and a lot of rocks. Every rock negotiated makes retreat more difficult. You have to be very nimble to steer the boat into the right tributary by a barely noticeable shift of the water. The water is deep near a big boulder, and that is the place to run. The journey is tough. Mikhail and Anatoly will spend a lot of time negotiating the sandbars and the rapids. But still, a big river permits to carry the whole load in a single run. And this is not always the case. Gennady Solovyov and his son make several runs. Solovyov's river is so shallow that he cannot use a big motor while a small one is not strong enough to clear the obstacles. In such cases, the pole is very useful, but it cannot solve all the problems. Местами такие, но там уже не перекаты, там уже пороги, что мотор восьмой ветерок с течением не может справиться. И вот длинные веревки и протягиваешь. Местами даже вдвоем мы не можем вытащить против течения. Плохо проходимая речка. Плеса, перекаты, пороги. И очень трудно по ней. В день проходишь 25-30 километров на лодке. Соловьёв's area is more than 100 kilometers long. All along it are hunting lodges, and each of them has to be prepared for the season and stocked with food and equipment. Весной завозят на буранах, которые в стороне от речки стоят. 
а которые избушки стоят на берегу реки, по большой воде завозишь основной груз. Все такое крупы, собакам. Все это лобозишь. Лабаз is a small wooden storehouse for food. It's located at the base lodge where the hunter keeps the main supplies, and it calls for particular attention. It is built on tall piles, which are basically barked up trees with the tops cut off. The top of the pile is covered with tin to keep out mice and bears. The base lodge is connected with the other huts by pathways, putiks, radiating in all directions. Traps for fur animals are put along the paths at 150-200 meter intervals. Ходовой соболь не выскочил на кулемку, проскочил, ушел дальше. Тут стараешься, чтобы как можно меньше проскочило через тебя. Геннадий Соловьев begins making his кулемка trap from wood in the spring when the snow is covered with a crust, and he finishes and hides it in the fall. Ну хорошая ловушка, пушнинка из нее качественная. Все, кулемочка готова. Сейчас еще середина сентября. А охотники уже настоящие охотники, которые живут на промысле в тайге. И где-то почти месяц будет заниматься примерно вот такой работой. И у меня сейчас где-то до середины октября вот такая же работа будет. За лето и деревья падают, и подгнивают ловушки. Три медведь. Bears are the sworn enemies of the commercial trapper. If they get to the hut, they throw out anything that catches their eye. Sleeping bags, pots and pans, clothing. The huts that are prone to be visited by bears have windows with polyethylene because glass is a commodity in short supply. Bears also attack trap locations. Вот это вот безобразие медведя. Иной раз ни шкуры, ни мяса его не надо, только вот за это вот тут как приводится к путику и ходит все подряд ломает запах есть и ведь не находит ничего съестного а все равно идет и ломает проверяешь избушки налаживаешь ловушки там рыбу да птицу может добудешь When preparing for the season, the hunter rarely touches the food supply, so apart from working his area, he hunts for food. The hunter's experience and skills are of course critical, but his survival in the taiga also depends on his like a dogs, their noses, energy and stamina. The head and feet of a woodcock is not a meal, just a sign of encouragement for the dog for its effort. The hunter and the Laika are workmates. The dog must find the animal or bird and bark to direct the hunter towards them. While it is tracking and pursuing the quarry, the Laika is silent. It only barks when it knows exactly where the quarry is. The Laika shows the place and makes it easier for the hunter to sneak up to the quarry by diverting the woodcock's attention. A stretched neck is a sign that the woodcock is on the alert and ready to fly away. The hunter must fire immediately. Solovio's area ends here. From here begins his elder son's area. У каждого свои дороги, свои планы, свой участок.
When frosts come, the river begins to cool rapidly. The water level falls and the fish draw away from the bank. This is the time when the pikes go on a spree feeding themselves before the long winter. It's the best time for hunters to catch and store up pikes for their time in the taiga. They mainly use the net to catch pikes, but sometimes the spinning method is more effective. The pikes are very active at this time of the year and grab anything, including the lure. Sometimes, though, it can itself become a victim, and not only the fishermen. It's not uncommon for pikes to attack each other. In the fall, the predatory instinct is so strong that the pike fails to see that its prey is already hooked. And judging from the scars on its sides, it too has been attacked, and it weighs at least 10 kilos. Such a big fish feels very much the governor in the water, and it ignores the boat with a fisherman. The fisherman is loath to let his prey escape. To get rid of a rival, the following method is sometimes used. The caught fish is left in the open to freeze up gradually. It'll be stored to feed the dogs. The hunter leaves a certain amount of food and stocks in every hut, depending on how many days and nights he's going to spend during the season. The loaves are laid at intervals so that they don't get stale and freeze up more quickly. To keep mice away from their bread box, the tree trunk is wrapped in polyethylene. The bear is no longer a menace. At this junction, he looks not for food, but for a den. Before the pebbled shoals are covered with snow, woodcocks alight on them. They pick small stones, which will grind their crude winter fare, cedar and tree needles inside their stomachs. Hunters take advantage of this habit of woodcocks. They often take woodcocks en route from one hut to another as they deposit the foodstuffs and gear. After being shot, the wounded bird may fly for about a kilometer, but the dog is supposed to locate it. Петька, мы их называем. Это самое время. Вот подстыло, подморозило маленько. Сейчас вот как раз добыть их можно. На реку вылетают. The onset of colds and snow is a boon for the hunters. То, что все наконец вот своим чередом идет, идет, идет дальше, дальше. Вот от этого уже ощущение сделанного дела. И вроде не ты это дело сделал, а все равно как-то причастен, все равно как-то участвуешь. Шуга прет, шуга, она вот эта шуга, она называется снежница. Это вот не, не та шуга, что с ночи шла, а это со снегом, вот она такая мягкая, рыхлая. По ней ехать вот на лодке, если там, то нормально еще. Переход из ранней осени в позднюю, с этой промозглой погодой, с этой ездой на лодке, на деревяшке, с грузом. Забота вся, вот этот груз довести, не потопить, не промочить. Добраться до избушки, избушку в порядок привести, в следующую избушку проехать. И все глубже, глубже в осень идем. Долгожданная после дождя это ясная погода и морозец. И счастья нету больше, чем вот согреться и чаю попить. Это ни на что не похоже. Все настоящее. Когда сюда приехал, вот у меня было ощущение, все, что просто сбывается, то, о чем я мечтал. Тут и красота, и дело делаешь. Почему все идут, в конце концов, где бы ни начинали, вот, они все равно приходят э, к 
охоте. Потому что ближе, чем на охоте, с тайгой не бываешь. Так, ну вот, еще одна избушка. Готово. Ведро перевернем, чтобы, чтобы вода не попала. Все. Развешен на своих местах. Навес сделан. В избушке тоже все подвешено. Крупа подвешена к потолку. Там сахар, чтобы мыши не сожрали. Так все вроде все нормально. Дрова наколоты, сложены. Продукты завезены. Короче, приведена в порядок еще одна избушка. И слава богу. Пошли, Рыжи. Айда. It's essential to prepare the huts standing by the river before the real cold set in, while the river is still navigable. In early October, frosts become more frequent. The water gets colder and cooler, and its level falls. By morning, it is covered with ice close to the banks, and you have to fight the ice. At every stop, there is more and more trouble with the boat and the motor. As frosts become frequent, there is more and more shogun. It grows strong and hard and scratchy, and it damages the boat by scratching its sides and bottom. But the main danger is that an accumulation of shogun can form a river bend in a narrow and quiet place and block the river overnight. So hunters try to be on the safe side and stop using wooden boats after the 10th of October. They return to the base lodge and drag the boat ashore. It will stay there throughout the winter waiting for the spring thaw. It's a week to go to the start of the hunting season. In Bakhta, the boats are still on the water at this time. The big river freezes up more slowly, and as long as it's free of ice, fishing and boating continues. October is the time for whitefish. They travel over a thousand kilometers from the ocean in the north to the spawning grounds in the south. The movement of the whitefish happens at the same time as the river freezes up. The only fish the locals can still catch in open water is cisco. They call the process floating because they catch the cisco with a net drifting down the river. The process begins with throwing into the water two boards joined crosswise in a vertical position. That way it draws more water stretching the net tied to it. The main thing about the net is the right placing of the tackle. The weight of the loads and the size of the floats are selected in such a way that the lower part of the net barely touches the river bottom. Having released the net into the water, the process of floating begins. One man works the oars to propel the boat stretching the net across the current. The other holds his hand on the net top, listening to the behavior. When he senses an obstacle on the bottom, he hitches the net to avoid it getting caught. After traveling one or two kilometers, the net is pulled out. Cisco is caught not only in Lake Baikal. For the NSA people, it's just as habitual as Tugun and Herring. Between 5 and 20 Cisco's can be caught in one such run depending on how long the net is and how actively the fish move. After pulling out the net, the fishermen go back to the place where they started. They do this shuttling all day. As the local saying goes, fish is not a road, it's always useful. But when the shoga appears, fishing in the open water comes to an end. Navigation is phased out gradually. First the boats are just taken out of the water to prevent them from freezing into it if there's a blast of northern wind. The Bakta people use their boats to the last. While the southern wind blows, you can still use your boats. There's always some load to carry. You can go on a short hunting trip, but you should always keep your eye on the sky. For a person of the Inisei region, getting an early warning of the weather change may be critical. 
A southern wind may change into a western wind, and then northwestern wind within minutes. It means that a large cyclone has broken across the Urals. A northwestern wind is bad news. Wind and snow have now joined forces. A blizzard breaks out. The northwestern wind is usually followed by a northern wind. With the invasion of cold, sugar becomes more dense and sticky and turns into ice close to the banks. It's hard and dangerous to make one's way through the heavy slush. A person must have a special reason to run this risk. And the reason is simple. Every Bakhta resident understands it. A fisherman has his net cast and it has been filled with sugar and he needs to go and salvage it. The net on the Yenisei is vital for survival. Some people still have business on the river, but most stop navigation completely as the ice gets harder. You cannot leave the boats in the river because when it freezes up, it will crush the boat. The boats are taken to the village as soon as the ground is covered with snow. Two events bring a drastic change to the life of the Yenisei residents. The thawing of ice in spring and the start of snowing in the fall. New paths become available and the roads straighten. Colds descend quickly on Siberia. The first big snowfall can cover the frozen earth and lie until spring. Beginning from October the 14th, the hunting season begins. The commercial trappers set up their deadfall and foothold traps. The upper hole in the Kulomka, called Crusher, falls on the lower one called the Threshold and presses the animal down. When the Kulomka is set up, a bait is fixed between the poles. It's usually a piece of bird skin with feathers. You can reach the bait only by standing on the threshold. To direct the animal towards it, they fix a sloping chip to the kulumka. <whistles> Setting up foothold traps is not as simple as it may seem. A cover is first made at the base of a tree. Two walls from pegs and a roof from twigs and bruised branches. The bait is put inside. In order to reach it, the animal has to use the gate where the cock trap is put. The trap is linked to the end of a long pole by a wire or a small chain. Она вот конец этого отчепа, он соскочит, когда зверек будет биться, и вздернет его, и тогда ни песец, ни лиса, ни росомаха, никто, ни мыши его не тронут. Поэтому так вот стараешься ближе к краешку, ну чтобы там ветром снегом не уронило. After setting up, the roof is covered with fresh spruce branches to prevent the trap from being buried in the snow. In the 300 years that Russian hunters have been trapping sables, they have invented many clever devices. But they pale before the working dog. The hunter's laika is the perfect means of catching fur animals. In a good year, a trapper with a dog can bag up to five sables a day. Такие вот бывают к собаке, которые они уже не собака, а так член твоего семейства, как говорится. А так-то, конечно, это кормилицы наши. Без собаки охотник не охотник. В 
The ease of traveling is not the only reason why commercial trapping areas are located along rivers. On the eve of winter, even if the colds are harsh, the river continues to give off warmth, keeping the climate more moderate in the valley. Vegetation is more lush and diverse here, providing food for all kinds of animals, including the sables, who move along the riverbanks in the autumn to spread out in the taiga. The animal leaves footprints on the snow. This is the best time to hunt sable with a dog. When a Laika searches an animal, it uses all its senses. After hitting the track, it follows it, guided by its smell. If the track breaks off, its sharp ears help to locate the animal. It's enough for the sable to brush against the tree for the dog to hear the sound even if it's 200 meters away. The sable usually hides itself from a dog on a tree. It's a dog's test to determine which tree. It notices the slightest movement. If the sable moves, the dog sees it at once. A good dog has a strong ringing bark it carries well, as the hunters say. The dog barks at the animal without losing sight of it for a minute until the hunter arrives. It's ready to continue the chase if the animal jumps off the tree. The dog bites the fallen sable just hard enough to make sure it is dead. Hunters get great store by their working dogs. It's very important to choose a good dog. Три месяца то я тебе почти без ошибки выберу собаку. Он уже начинает кошку следить, именно что по следам ее начинает нюхтить там, куриц давить там все подряд. Хочешь собаку хорошую иметь? От хороших собак бери собак щенков. И естественно, что воспитание зависит. Если ты взял собаку от хороших собак, да посадил ее в стайку, она у тебя просидела 6 месяцев, а потом ты ее взял в тайгу, ясно, что с нее уже никакой охотницы, охотницы не будет. Proven work dogs are sure to have good puppies. But each has its own character, even if they all come from the same litter. Где ее взять универсальную собаку? Есть у ней залосем она вот вязкая, вот все значит. Ты ее уже никак не приучишь, чтобы она тебе белку искала. Но зацокает белка, она там гафнет два раза, а специально она не будет искать. Так что не устраивает тебя собака такая, заводи новую. Не устраивает еще новые заводи. Чем ты их будешь больше менять, тем у тебя больше шансов завести ту собаку, которая тебе понадобится. Some hunters keep several dogs for hunting different animals. But the most important dog for the trapper is the one that chases sables. Running away from a laika, a sable can hide on a tree or between rocks or in a hole in the ground. In such cases, the sable has to be chased out with smoke. Two holes are left in the den. One for smoke to enter and the other for the animal to exit only to be caught by the dog. If the sable finds an exit that the dog doesn't notice, it may run for cover. Often it's a fallen tree trunk with hollows. The hunter knocks on the wood with his axe to make the animal reveal his location. Then he cuts narrow chinks and uses a stick to chase the sable toward the dog. It's a great stroke of luck to have a dog whose genes make it want to hunt the sable. You don't have to train it. Its owner is anyone who carries a rifle. It is born to track down the sable. It's the meaning of its life.
the olden days, owners who had such dogs kept mum about it to avoid competition and even drown their pups, leaving a few only for themselves. A dog of outstanding ability is rare, but if a hunter is lucky to get one, he remembers it all his life. У меня где-то штуки четыре было. Ну, как обычно, с хорошей собаки долго и не живут. У меня из этих вот четырех собак только одна собака дожила до десятка лет. А остальные где-то четыре-пять лет в самом рассвете погибают. Это у меня последний случай был. Вот последняя собака была, сучонка, дымка. Получилось, что медведь пришел в деревню. Ну и как рыкнул эти собаки, это деревенские сразу испарились. Я якобеля отпустил своего на лай. Ну и что, он только поскочил, там два раза гавкнул и затих. Ну и почуял что-то такое неладное, там бегу. Ага. Вот уже подбежал уже вот совсем рядом. Ага. И слушаю, эта сучка, вот эта дымка, она это, откашливается, шерсть выплевывает, что она рвет этого медведя, несколько хваток сделала, и потом она сразу вякнула и затихла. Тоже. Но я вот уже рядом был. Я подскочил, а там тропа такая, скот набил, мох. И он так в тропе лежит и зубами рвет. А там, ну я близко прямо вот совсем подскочил к нему. Я прицелился в голову, то ему выстрелить. А и вот только на курок наживать. Он раз в это время, видать, услышал меня, раз голову поднял. Я выстрелил и лапу ему переднюю, переднюю лапу ему прямо в кисть пуля бы только задела. Но он сразу в мах и на меня. И вот буквально вот считай, что <coughs> Но я его чуть стволом не задел. В общем, вот добежал, я в упор прямо застрелил. Я от пули откинул там. Ага. Но подбежал, эта дымка еще живая. Кабель вообще разорванный. Весь изжамканный. Но я ее схватил сразу, она <coughs> и так еще это, такая вот, ну, посмотрел у нее там это живот разорванный, так, кишочка немного висит. Ну, думаю, думаю, может, спасу сразу бегом к этой к фельдшерице, уже там на этого медведя внимания не обращаю. Метров, наверное, 30-40 пробежал и все, смотрю, голова упала, все, погибло. Жалко ее очень. When the snow becomes deep, hunting with a dog ends. By the beginning of November, the temperature drops below 30 degrees Celsius. All the tributaries and small rivers are covered with ice and the taiga assumes its winter look. But however harsh the weather is in the fall, it cannot tame the Yenisei at once. At the beginning of the icing period, just like during the ice thaw in spring, the Yenisei is impossible to cross. But unlike in spring, in the fall that period doesn't last long. The ice freezes close to the banks, and as soon as that fringe of ice becomes strong enough, Bakta residents come onto the ice to catch the burbot. The fishing rod is a crude pole about three meters long. A hook is tied by a nylon rope to the sharpened lower end on which the bait is attached. It can be small fish as long as it's alive. The rod is lowered into the water carefully not to harm the bait and stuck to the bottom and left for the night. The rods are checked every morning to make sure that the burbot which is usually caught at night, does not escape. The useless bait is removed and replaced with a new one. Вот такие попадают. Пойдем, видишь какие? Замёрзли, 
Ольгар. Самая добрая рыба на Рим. Вот так. Ну, питаться ты есть, большинство питается. Здесь ты ведь, стоите все. Они вот это налим, да тугул, сорожка. Они же не могут промышлять ходить. From the fall until spring, the burbot is the staple food of the Bukhtar residents. Кроме налима ничего не ешь. Пельмени делаем из него. Котлеты. Burbot is the staple food not only for humans, but also for dogs. Налим это кормилица, беда и выручка. Live bait is prepared from early fall. At first, when the ice fringe is not wide on the NSA, it is kept on the nearby rivers and lakes in wooden boxes with chinks to prevent the fish from choking and to ensure that water flows in. The live baits are used sparingly. When they go out to fish, they take as many baits as there are rods. The small fish used as live bait for the burbot is chosen depending on your taste. У него есть такой период, что он берет на ярша лучше, потом на яйца бывает не берет. Ну, у него периодически как-то меняется, в зависимости не знаю от чего, что. Ну, в основном он берет хорошо на щучку, конечно, и на пескаря основное направление. With each frosty morning there is more ice and less open water on the Yenisei. Entire ice fields are formed near the banks, and the Bakhtar residents take their fishing gear further and further away from the bank. Now boxes with live bait can be kept on the ice. The live bait may die in the shallow water which freezes down to the bottom. Half of them die anyway. Bait fish are stocked up within amounts big enough to make them last through the winter. The live bait are taken as far away from the bank as possible to the deep flowing water, put back in the box and quickly immersed in the river before they freeze. Preserving the bait is the chief concern. If you have the bait, you will have bourbon. Of course, there are various fishes in the Yenisei, but with the other fishes, it's a matter of luck. Not much depends on the fisherman's skill. Вот сейчас Енисей встанет, он хорошо в большую воду приведет, зажмет бахту. Я еще таймения могу поймать. Если до Нового года я там сети не поставлю, все, больше я таймения не увижу. А налим это, по сути дела, это всю зиму вон. Значит, он получается, что, кормилец нас. It's a week before the Yenisei freezes up completely. The weather gets colder and colder. The Yenisei gets more and more silent by the hour. Its breath grows weaker. The main stream where the ships go is the last to freeze up. Only yesterday, vapor was rising from open water. And then suddenly, winter came to the Yenisei on November the 10th. The Bakhtar residents are in a hurry to make the winter road across the Yenisei ice before the snowdrifts have formed over piles of ice. They set up markers of the new road. That way you can see the road and cross to the other bank to get some hay or cast nets. Trying to keep pace with the Yenisei, People have learned to understand and not to be afraid of it. They are themselves part of that river with its different winds and changing weather. Human life goes on, on the banks of the Yenisei, as irrepressible as life under the ice that covers it. <laughs> <laughs>